By the way, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Juan. This is my wife, Deidre. We're the pastors here at Victory Church. We're so glad that you're here. And in just a moment, um, we're, we're going to dedicate, families have, de have decided to dedicate babies today. And you might come from a background where, where maybe the babies are baptized. We don't do that here at Victory Church. Um, we, we dedicate babies to the Lord. It's, it's what we see biblically. And, uh, and so that's what's going to happen today. These are moms and dads and families that are simply said, we want to recognize that God is going to play a major role in my child's life. And we want to dedicate our child to God. And so um, I want to, first of all, welcome Sarah Rowland. Can you come? And I know you're standing over there, but this is Sarah Rowland. And she is our nursery director. She's been in that role now for quite a number of months, and we're so thankful for her. We're thankful for you, Sarah, for the leadership that she's providing. And so, Sarah, let's go ahead and begin. And All right. Who are we starting with today? All right. We are starting with Opal Joy Baker. All the way over here. Mom, Anna, and Dad Jeffrey, Aww. and our siblings. Oh. Well, hey, Opal. Can I hold you? I said, bless you. Is that okay? Hope, oh, we bless you today as we dedicate you to Jesus. I bless you. And I pray that God's goodness and favor would rest upon your life, Opal. That you would always walk before the Lord in beauty and in holiness. That God will give you ears to hear his voice and a heart to embrace his love. That God will bless you in every way, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. That you would grow up to be a very strong woman of God, bringing joy to your mom and dad all the days of your life. I bless you, Opal, and I bless your family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. She doesn't know about me. Next, we have <laughs> Lennox and hey, mom, Lennox. Ciara. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. So, Lord, we bless Lennox as we dedicate him dedicate him to you today and Lord I pray that you would bless Lennox's life Jesus that you'd become real in his life in his heart that Lennox would grow up to be a mighty man of God knowing your voice the courage God to hear and obey what you say I bless him father in every way physically that he'd grow to be strong and healthy in every way I bless him emotionally that he would learn to love and be loved I bless him mentally, God, that you'd give him a mind to understand concepts and ideas and, and, and retain important information. And I bless him spiritually, God, that he would know you and make you known in the world around you. I bless Lennox today as we dedicate him to the Lord. I bless him and his family in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Bless you, Mama. This is Araya. Araya Cruz, Mom and Dad Rico, and oh. Kila. Raya. Oh, you guys family? I'll, I'll hold her though. You, you're going to protect me? Oh my goodness. Listen church, I, I, I know some of the stories up here. You have no idea the miracles that are on this stage. The miracles and Tila and Rico. We bless you and Araya, we bless you. Ari, right, I'm so thankful that your daddy and mommy are here together dedicating you to the Lord. And I just speak miracles over you. I speak that God would show himself strong in your life even at an early age, give you ears to hear his voice, a heart sensitive to understand his longing for you. I bless you to be healthy in every way, that the good things from each side of your family will come to you speedily. And all of the other stuff, the negative things would stay far away from your life. I bless you to walk before the Lord in beauty and in holiness. That you would be an Esther in your days. A Deborah filled with courage and love for God and his people. I bless you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uriah, that you would be a blessing to your family and a light to the world as Jesus shines through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, guys. Next, we have Shay McKelvey and Twistle. 
and mom and dad, Emily and Sean. Hey guys, Shay looks so comfortable. I barely <laughs> want to grab him. Shay, we bless you. There is a thread of righteousness, young man, that runs through your family. And may it be strong in you. Shay, we speak over you. You are a man of faith. You are a man of God. You're a mighty man of valor. We bless you with courage. Ears to hear his voice like little Samuel. Eyes to see what he's doing and a heart courageous enough to embrace God's reality in your life. I bless you in each and every way. That all of the good things from each side of the family be drawn to you and all of the other stuff that's not of God stay far away. I bless you in Jesus' name to walk before the Lord in strength and in honor, being a joy to your mom and dad and a blessing to your family. We bless you as we dedicate you to Jesus today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Congratulations, guys. Next, we have Zaina Godoy, mom, Angela, and dad, Aww. Xavier. <laughs> Little Zaina, oh my gosh. She's probably the smallest one up here. <laughs> Zaina, we bless you today. Zaina, your mommy and daddy, they love you, and they love Jesus. And as we dedicate you to the Lord, we recognize the miracle that you are, and we bless you. We bless you physically that you grow up to be strong and healthy in every way. Sickness and disease stay far from you. We bless you emotionally that you would learn to love and be loved. We bless your mind be able to be think brilliantly and think outside of the box. We bless you with God thoughts. We bless you spiritually. That God will give you ears to hear his voice and a heart to embrace his truth. We bless you to walk before the Lord in beauty and holiness all the days of your life. To never know wandering. We bless you and your family and your parents as we dedicate you to Jesus today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Congratulations. Oh. oh, my goodness. We have Braxton Amir Johnson and Mom Desiree. All right. <laughs> Braxton, you ready? Father, we thank you for Braxton, and we bless him as we dedicate him to you today. And, Lord, we speak every blessing from each side of the family. God, be drawn to his life. God, give them ears to hear you and a heart to love you, a mind to understand the deep things of God and courage to walk before you. Father, we bless him and pray, God, that you would keep him in every way, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, that no harm would come to him. God, that you'd give him joy and that he would bring joy to those around him. We bless him as we dedicate him to the Lord today. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. You're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> Congratulations. We have Holland, Parker, Moon, Mom, Grace, and Dad, Austin. Oh, wow. Hey, Holland, would you come with me for just a little bit? Oh, man, you're well fed, buddy. Yeah. Holland, we bless you today as we dedicate you to Jesus. We recognize that God is good. And that God wants to live big in your life. And so as we dedicate to you to Jesus, we bless you. That all the good things from each side of your family will come to you speedily. And all the bad things, sickness, disease, stay far from you. We speak Zoe life, God life over you, Holland. That you'd grow before the Lord in strength and in honor. Walking always before him with great courage. That God would give you ears to hear his voice. And a tender heart for him alone. We bless you in every way, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, that you grow up to be a man of God and bring joy to your family. We bless you, Holland, your mom and dad, and your entire home. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Next, we have Zyriana Shepherd and Zavea Williams, mom. All right. 
Dinara and Dad Lamarcus. Which one's Ariana? The other one? And Zavea, guys. Father, we bless these beautiful girls as we dedicate them to Jesus today. Lord, we ask, God, that you would bless them and keep them in every way. We bless them physically, God, that they grow up to be strong and healthy. Sickness and disease stay far from them. We bless them emotionally, God, that they would be able to know to love deeply and to love others. We bless them, God, spiritually. God, that even at a young age, you'd give them tender hearts, God, to your Holy Spirit, that they would hear your voice, that would understand your will and plan for their life. Lord, we pray, God, and bless them that they would never know wandering, that they would never know God backsliddenness, but God, they would always pursue you. Lord, bless them, their families. We thank you for your calling on their life, your anointing on their life. We thank you, God, that you go before them and that you're with them. We bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a hug. I love you. Bye-bye. Next, we have Gabrielle Zolovic and Giovante Zolovic with All Mom right, Felicia. Gabrielle and Giovante Zolovic. Yeah. I know, Grandpa, we're praying for you, my friend. Can't be here, but you're here. And great grandma, who's 101 years old, is in the front row. I mean, can we give it up for great grandma? 101. But Gabrielle and Giovante. Wow, what an honor to dedicate you guys to Jesus today. And Father, we bless them. We bless Gabrielle. Yes, we do. And we bless Yovante as we dedicate them to the Lord. And Lord, we ask, God, that you would bless them in every way, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We bless you to know the God of your father and of your father's fathers, to know the God of the generations that is in your life and working in and through your life, that God will keep you in every way, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We bless you to bring joy to your family, to know God and to make him known all the days of your life. We bless you, little guy, and we bless you, beautiful daughter. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Come on. <laughs> Done. That's it. No more. No more. That's Come it. on. <laughs> hey, families, God bless you. We love you. And we thank God for the miracles that are on the stage. The, the, we, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Let's Hi, give it up Mom. one more happy time Mother's for them. Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms as well. And as they're being seated, can you do me a great big favor? Just stand up real quick and greet somebody around you. Shake somebody's hand. Make everybody feel welcome here at Victory Church this morning. God bless you. Um, I want to give it up to Maddie and the worship team. Um, our worship pastor is not here today. He and his brand new bride, Pastor Bree, our kids pastor, just got married this weekend. They are actually boarding a cruise ship for their honeymoon as we speak. And so we're thankful for Pastor Brendan, Pastor Bree, but also for Maddie and the worship team as they led us this morning. Come on, can we give it up for them? And uh, a big, a big happy Mother's Day to, um, to all of the moms. I want to take a moment and just recognize my, my friends, um, Jason and Diane Alford, who are here. And uh, uh, again, just my sympathies. Some of you may know that Shirley Alford went home to be with Jesus uh, last week. Uh, she was the wife of Jay Alford, who was an incredible leader, pastor in our area for many, many, many years, and uh, a wonderful mom. And I'll never forget the day that I was at her home, and um, I think, Jason, you were in the basement, and I snuck upstairs, and I said, Mom, can you bless me? And she laid her hand on my forehead and, and blessed me and prayed over me, even with tears in her eyes. I remember going downstairs saying, Jason, I stole your blessing. I stole the birthright. <laughs> uh, but again, our sympathies, as I know we're going to honor and celebrate her tomorrow evening and on, on Tuesday as well. Um, but listen to all the moms. I, I know that, um, you know, th there's mixed emotion when it comes to Mother's Day, but we want all of the moms here to feel blessed, to be honored today, the babies that we dedicated. Uh, mom, to my, mi, mi mamá, feliz día de las madres. Mira, me vestí para ti, solamente para ti. I got dressed up just for you, mama. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, my mother-in-law was in first service, and uh, my, to my wife, happy Mother's Day. I love you to all the moms. Amen. 
Well, listen, we're going to jump right into the message today. Uh, we began a series a couple of weeks ago titled, His Spirit Powers Me. His Spirit Powers Me. And um, we are learning about the person of Holy Spirit. His Spirit Powers Me is not just the title of this series, but it is what it is also one of our mission measures, okay? Our mission here at Victory Church, if you know it, say it with me, is challenging everyday people to experience every victory in Jesus. How do we know we are successful in our mission? That's where our mission measures come in. They are like the target or the bullseye that lets us know when we're hitting the mark. It lets us know how we're doing in our growth and in our journey with God. And so up on the screen, you're going to see our mission measures. They are, His Word Leads Me. His spirit powers me. That's the series that we're on today. I build my family. I share his victory. I live in freedom and I command my finances. One of the things that we created as well is we created what we call develop by statements where we take a mission measure and we kind of dig in a little bit deeper to really help us grow in these these big areas of our lives and so uh for his spirit powers me here's what they are being baptized in the holy spirit and continually being filled having a daily prayer life that includes speaking in tongues demonstrating the gifts and the fruit of the spirit and obeying the conviction and prompting of the holy spirit if you've been with us you'll know that We've been talking about the person of Holy Spirit, and we've learned so far that, first of all, that Holy Spirit is God. He is as much God as God the Father and God the Son, Jesus. We're also learning that He's a person, and the reason that's important is because if you don't understand that He's a person, you won't develop a personal relationship with Him. Because you don't develop personal relationships with things or with objects. You develop personal relationships with people, with persons. Holy Spirit is a person, and he's the most important person on planet Earth today. And nobody loves Jesus more than Holy Spirit. You'll never have to be afraid that Holy Spirit will lead you off into some new thing or some weird thing. No, Holy Spirit is always pointing to Jesus. If you love Jesus and want to know him better and want to love him more, there's no better person to help you with that than the person of Holy Spirit. The Bible that we're going to be looking at today, in fact, I want you to go ahead and turn to just two places in your Bible. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to begin there in just a second. That's the first place we're going to look at. Genesis chapter 1. Uh, Genesis is the first book in the Bible, chapter 1. And then also put a bookmark in John chapter 14. John 14. John is the fourth book in the New Testament. It makes up the last of the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John 14, we're going to hit that in just a moment, but, and so if you're using a paper Bible, turn to Genesis 1, and if you've got a ribbon like I do, you can put that in John 14. Maybe you're using a smart device, then click on Genesis 1. We're going to read verse 2 in just a moment, but before we do, all of the scriptures are going to be up on the screen behind me. You could jot down the reference, study them throughout the week. That'd be wonderful. Really encourage you to do that. But the Bible primarily was written in two languages. Two languages. The Old Testament was written in the language called Hebrew. It was written in the Hebrew language. The New Testament primarily was written in the Greek language. The reason that the Old Testament was written in the Hebrew and the New Testament was written in the Greek is because the people that Holy Spirit had inspired to write down God's word, well, that's the language that they used and the language that was common or that the people spoke that God's word was written to. And so in the Hebrew Old Testament, you have a word that is often used that is translated into English as spirit or Holy Spirit, but predominantly spirit. And that word is the Hebrew word ruach, ruach. Can you say that with me? Ruach. Now you got to say like you got some popcorn stuck in the back of your throat, right? It's ruach. And so ruach, here's what ruach means. It means a wind, breath a violent exhalation, a blast of breath. That's the Hebrew word, ruach. And one of the first places we find it is in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. It's the first scripture I had you turn to. Here's what it says. 
The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Ruach of God, the Spirit of God, was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, the Greek word that is often translated as spirit in the New Testament is the Greek word pneuma. Pneuma. The P is silent in pneuma. And that word, in that Greek word, means a current of air, a blast of breath, a strong breeze. We find that word throughout the New Testament. Uh, in places like John chapter 6 and verse 63, whenever Jesus said that the words that I speak are pneuma, they are spirit and they are life. Which tells us that our faith and that our Christianity, it should, it should be full of breath, it should be full of life. It should not be a stale, dry, anemic, dead thing. No, our faith should be full of the life and the breath of God. If it isn't, we must be doing it wrong. Amen? And so what I'd like to do today is I'd like to, do, I'd like to see some of the characteristics and talk about the characteristics that the wind and Holy Spirit have in common. For us to better understand the person of Holy Spirit, I want us to look at characteristics of wind and Holy Spirit and, and how they have these in common. And so the first one, if you're taking notes, write this down. If you're not taking notes, write this down. Number one, wind is unseen. Wind is unseen. We can also say Holy Spirit is unseen. Now, whenever... Uh, if you can imagine, we're stepping into a season right now that many of us are thankful for here in Northeast Ohio, Western Pennsylvania. Here in the Midwest, you know, we are stepping into more, uh, just a nicer weather season, right? And I don't know about you, but I, I, I walked out this morning. It was a little bit early, a little bit colder than, than it will probably be today, but it was still nice. And I just remember walking outside and feeling that nice, fresh breeze blowing at me. I didn't see it but I could feel it. In John chapter 14, and it's the scripture I had you bookmark, in verse 16 and 17, here's what it says about Holy Spirit. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I will pray the Father, or I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The wind is unseen in the same way Holy Spirit is unseen, but, listen to me, he can be felt. He can be felt. In fact, that's the reason that some of you keep coming back. It's not because of the preaching. It's not because of the music. It's not because of the coffee, it's not because of the programs, but you keep coming back because there is someone in this room that is not a preacher, that, is not, uh, that doesn't have a title, but his name is Holy Spirit, and you keep coming back because although, although all of those things you enjoy, there's something about the person of Holy Spirit that keeps you wanting coming back for more. You can't see him, but you can feel him when you worship God, and when you worship him, you don't know why you're crying, but there's something about pulling into a, a, a place like this and walking into a moment like this where you feel the joy and you feel the peace and you feel the encouragement and you feel the courage and the faith building up in your life listen to me that's not a thing it's not an energy it's a person and he is Holy Spirit in fact I remember one of the things my wife and I love to do is after church service we like sneaking out into the lobby and and meeting people and greeting folks that we haven't seen in a while and I remember a little while back I met a guy for the first time he was a newbie kind of newer to the church and his, he, he was talking to me, and his eyes was as big as saucers. And we're out in the lobby, and he points into this room, and he says, Pastor, there's something in that room. He says, there's something in that room. And I remember thinking, there's, it's not a thing, it's a person. And he says, there's something in that room, and I like it. And then he turns to me, and he cussed. He said, and Pastor, by the way, that was a hell of a sermon you preached. <laughs> I remember thinking, buddy, just keep coming around, keep coming around, because God is going to work some things in you and some things out of you. Now, if you didn't know that that was a cuss word, you keep coming around too, all right? 
But what was he saying? He was saying there's something in the room. It's not a thing. It's a person. I remember having a good friend who's a rabbi. We had an event at the church here, and, and he told me afterwards, he said, he said, Pastor, man, the energy was just so powerful in that room during the event. It's not an energy. Holy Spirit is not God's force. It's not like Star Wars. May the force be with you. It's not a thing. He's a person and he is holy. He's the Ruach in the Old Testament, the Numa in the New Testament. He is unseen, but you can feel him. That's why in moments like this, He'll step into a moment like this and he'll do a miracle in your life. He'll, he'll, he'll bring comfort to those that need comfort. And he'll bring joy to those that need joy. He'll do miracles. And even though we can't see him, he's in this moment. He is working. He is active. He is living. He was there when you got saved. He's the one that convinced you of your need of a savior. He was there when you were going crazy and lost and far gone. And when it was mama and grandma that were praying for you, who do you think was the one that invaded that dark place in your life it was the person of holy spirit convincing you of your need for jesus he is real and he is here let's celebrate him for just a moment because he's that good and that guy kept coming back he wasn't coming back for an institution he was coming back for a person for holy spirit so number one when it is unseen number two and again these can be said of holy spirit as well number two wind is unpredictable Wind is unpredictable. The wind will shift on you in just a moment and won't even warn you. In fact, if you travel, do any traveling, you'll see at the airports that there are these, these flags stationed around the airport because they're giving wind direction to pilots, to the people up in the tower, because it's important when you're landing that plane that you know the way the wind is blowing. And so you'll see flags everywhere. And you've got people that are trained up in the tower and on the ground. And they're watching intently those flags to see the way the wind is blowing. And, and you'll see that those flags, I mean, they're blowing this way. And then all of a sudden, it'll shift on you because the wind is unpredictable. Why is that important? The reason that's important to understand is because a lot of us, we like God to be predictable. We like to serve a God that can fit in a very neat, tight, understandable, and predictable, cute little theological, doctrinal, and denominational box. And anything outside of that box, well then we just, we, that's not, listen, I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to serve a God that I can predict everything he does. I don't want to serve a God that's so small that he can fit into my cute little theological box. No, God is like the wind. He is unpredictable. God doesn't do things the same way every time. He doesn't do the, the things the same way every time. Why, and and, the re, and why, why doesn't he? You know why? Because we would end up, you and I, we would end up worshiping the system instead of him. In fact, the Bible says in John 3, 8 that the, blend, the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Holy Spirit has an unpredictable nature. If you remember the story in the Old Testament about Moses. Moses was, was the man that God would give the Ten Commandments to. And before that event took place, Moses would have an encounter with God. And God spoke to Moses. You remember how God spoke to Moses in the desert? How did he speak to Moses? Through a burning, through a burning bush, right? And that was Moses' first encounter with God. God spoke to him through a burning bush. Now, could you imagine that Moses, you know, after God met with him at, in, the, in the desert, spoke to him through that burning bush, he would go back to Egypt on assignment to set God's people, Israel, free from bondage of Egypt. I could imagine that someone in Egypt said, hey, Moses, God spoke to me too. Oh, really? What? How did he speak to you? Well, I was just in my room, and I was praying, and God spoke to me. And, and, and I could just imagine Moses stepping back and saying, wait a minute. You mean there was no bush? No. There was no fire? No. Well, then God didn't speak to you. Because that's how most of us would be, right? I, I think about when Jesus, in the New Testament, Jesus had a reputation that he was a healer. He would go from town to town and he will heal people. And the way that he would often do it is he would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. 
Sometimes he would cast out a spirit of infirmity. But Jesus had the reputation of healing people. And one day, this man that was born blind had heard about Jesus. He had heard that Jesus would often just simply lay hands on sick people, on the blind, on the deaf, on the people that had leprosy, and they would just be healed miraculously. And so this one day, this man begins crying out to God, began crying out to Jesus. And Jesus, and this blind man, in, in my mind's eye, I mean, listen, it's my sermon. I can preach like I want to. But in my mind, I could just hear this, in this man say, man, I want Jesus to touch me today. I want Jesus to touch me and to heal me. Jesus sees this blind man, and guess what? He doesn't touch him. But you know what he does? Jesus steps back and goes, <laughs> He spits in dirt, and then he takes that spit and that dirt, and he begins mixing it together and begins rubbing it on that poor blind man's eyes. And I could, and I could just hear church folks saying, oh, Jesus, not today. I just invited my friend to church, and you're going to go and do this, you know? How embarrassing. He had never done it that way before. Could you imagine a blind guy? What are you doing, Jesus. You're just supposed to touch me. And there is Jesus blowing it, unpredictable, just blowing everyone away. And he puts the mud in his eyes. And the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus tells him, now go wash yourself. Read it. I mean, it's scandalous. He doesn't give him, pull out a hanky or nothing. He says, now go wash yourself. And the Bible says the man washed himself. The mirror, I mean, he began to see. It was, but he, Jesus never did that again. You know why? Because of you. Because if he would have done it more than once, we would have churches right now called the church of the spit and mud church. We'd have denomination. I'm telling you, listen, you think I'm lying. We'd have denominations where we would have buckets of spit and dirt. And that, we won't be using oil. We'd be putting nasty stuff on. I'm so glad. Jesus, thank you for not doing it again. Because people, because your people are crazy. You're not crazy, but they are. I'm so glad. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the wind is unpredictable. And I think we need an unpredictable wind to blow into the church of America once again. Listen, our nation needs revival. And just when we think, we look back and we say, it can't get any darker than this. I mean, guys, listen, I don't care if you're right wing or left wing, the whole bird is sick. You hear me? And we need a move of God in our nation, in our schools, in our young people, in a generation that breaks the back of anxiety and worry and breaks the back of addictions. We need a move, an unpredictable move of the Holy Spirit. Number three, wind is powerful. Wind is powerful. Wind, the same wind that can refresh you in the morning as you're sitting outside sipping a cup of coffee, that same wind can generate electricity that powers whole communities. That same wind can sail a 10-ton ship in an ocean. And that same wind can devastate a city. Why is that important? That's important because many of us are going through things that, listen to me, human power cannot fix. Doesn't matter how much ingenuity and how much technology we can come up with, every now and then we go through things as humans where human capability is limited. Our power to fix what's wrong with us is limited. Because there are some things that you and I go through in our personal lives, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our homes, in our families that human power cannot fix. But I've got good news for you. We have a Holy Spirit that is powerful. The same Holy Spirit that can soothe your soul during quiet morning devotions is the same Holy Spirit that can take the hardest thing that you're facing in life, the darkest thing that you're facing, and he could turn it on a dime. Why? Because he is powerful. And when human power meets its limits, 
That's when God can step in and say, now it's my time to take over and to take charge and to do something in your life that you couldn't do for yourself because wind is powerful. Wind is powerful. Wind took an alcoholic, drug-addicted daddy, my father, 44 years ago. And when my mom did not have enough influence and power in her life to make him find Jesus, when friends that he used to party with that came to Christ and were born again did not have enough influence and power to reach my father, I thank God that we have a Holy Spirit that is not limited but that has all power and can go into the darkest of places and reach the hardest and most addicted of people. Listen. Do you realize that there is no government sanction? There is no wall that you can build. There is no law that you can pass that can keep Holy Spirit out of a school, out of a government, out of a nation. (laughs) Why? Because he's all powerful. Listen, I ain't mean to get all preachy on you. You guys are just, you're messing me up, right? Let's let's keep going. Acts 1-8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. The Bible doesn't, doesn't say you shall be weird. It says you'll be my witnesses. You'll tell others what you've experienced, what you've seen, and what you've heard. That's what a witness does. What have you seen? What have you heard? And you testify of those things. You are a witness of those things. It's, it's like I shared at first service, um, you know, but my, my friend Josh Kriebel, right? La- I, so, so here, let me, be, let me be a witness. Can I tell you of what I've seen and heard? Can I do that? So last week, during service, each service, we, we, we set aside time to pray for people. Now, we do that every week, but last week was a little bit different in that I didn't preach as long as I am now, and I'm, I'll be done soon. Don't worry. You'll, you'll get to lunch here and, and bless mama in a moment. But last week, we prayed for people who needed, uh, especially prayer for healing, who were sick in their body. Well, and and it was wonderful. Listen, the altars were filled, and God did many wonderful things. We've gotten some great reports. But I heard in the back room in between services that my friend Josh was sick, and he wasn't in church that day. That that he actually was was in urgent care because of a bad, uh, bad back pain. He hurt himself at work. And so we leave church second service. My wife and I are driving home, and Josh is part of leadership here, and and, um, uh, he's family. He's he's a friend. He's family. And so we're driving home, and I call Josh, and I say, hey, Josh, I heard you were in urgent care. You're in urgent care this morning. He said, yeah, I'm home now. He said, they gave me meds. I'm lying down. It hurts to stand up. It hurts to lay down. I'm just, it's in pain. And I said, well, can I pray for you? I said, did you just, you know, we were praying for people. And he said, I know. He said, I watched online. And uh, so he, he, he joined our online campus last, last week. He watched online. I said, well, can I pray for you? He said, yeah. And so I prayed for Josh. And, you know, um, and it was just a simple prayer it, out of compassion. I love, really, Josh, I called you. You know why I called you? I didn't call you necessarily because I had this great faith that God was going to raise you up. But I called you because I said, man, that man serves us. That man serves the church. And, Lord, can you just bless? I wanted God to bless you. I, you know, like I just want... And so I hang up the phone after we pray with him, and he's texting me. I'm driving. My wife's saying, you get a text from Josh. I'm like, well, what's this say? And then he calls me. We're not even home yet. He says, Pastor, I don't know. He said, but I feel good right now. He said, I'm standing up. I'm sitting down. There's no pain. He said, I'm bending down. There's no pain. And so I just want to take a moment and brag on my very best friend, Holy Spirit, who wasn't limited, who, you know, the Holy Spirit didn't say, well, Josh doesn't count because he didn't show up at church. No, Holy Spirit says, yeah, I love him too. I'll touch him too. Listen, if you're watching online, Holy Spirit is not limited. He is not confined to the space-time continuum. He is a Holy Spirit and powerful enough to meet you right where you are. I thought about a story, the story and the history of a man by the name of Charles Finney. Charles Finney was an American revivalist, and I read his story, and it's a remarkable story, and I'm saddened that today in the church, we don't know about our great church heroes, men like Harry Hoosier, an African-American evangelist, revivalist, that 
in the late 1800s was used powerfully by God in the Midwest, in the state, in our state, but also especially in Indiana. He would have large crowds of gatherings and preach the good news of Jesus. And God would revive those, those, those cornfields that he would preach in. And so many people would come to Jesus, especially in the, in the state of Indiana, that you would walk into the store and they'd say, Oh, you're one of those Hoosiers, aren't you? And today we've got people that call themselves Hoosiers and they have no idea that they're named after an African-American revivalist and evangelist. We've lost all these stories. Charles Finney, Charles Finney was considered to be the father of modern day revival in America. He was a 19th century attorney, listen, a Presbyterian pastor, and in his own words, he was comfortable knowing God in what he calls at an intellectual level only. And his life, according to his own testimony, he says his life was lifeless and predictable. Until Holy Spirit stepped in. Here are his words, his own words, and I quote. The Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves and waves of liquid love, for I could not express it in any other way. It seemed like the very breath of God. And there's some of us here today that it is mission critical that we encounter the person and the power of Holy Spirit. It is mission critical for our life, for our marriages, for our homes. It is mission critical that in this hour and for a generation and for our community, it is mission critical for our nation that we just don't have church as usual anymore. Listen to me. We need an unpredictable, unseen, all-powerful Holy Spirit to invade us once again. Lastly, number four, the wind is refreshing. Wind is refreshing. To all the moms out there, I, I just want to encourage you and let you know. If there's anything that Holy Spirit wants to do in your life, dads, moms, is he wants to refresh you. He wants to refresh you. Why? Because wind, it's refreshing. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says that eye has not seen nor ear has heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. I love that. I love the fact that while I'm preaching to you, the best sermon that you're hearing is the sermon that Holy Spirit is speaking to you. It never fails. I'll go out of, I'll go out of a meeting like this. It, on Sundays where I feel like I preach my worst, I'll walk off the stage and... I'll just whisper to my wife. It doesn't happen all the time, but there are times where I just, I'll whisper to my wife. I said, honey, I hope that was okay. It's in those moments that people sit me, catch me in back in the lobby and say, pastor, that was the best sermon I ever heard. And then they'll say something that I said that I never said. It's Holy Spirit. Why? Because listen, I, 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 can, I can do my best to use, to use, what I've learned in speaking and communication, I could do my best to describe to you all that God has for you and all that he wants to do, but I will fail every time because eyes have not seen and ears has not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. I can stand up here and tell you all that God wants to do in your life. I mean, I, it's what I've given my life to do. I, I, I do this because I'm called by God to help people, not impress people, to help people, to help people encounter God, to help people meet God. Every, and it's available for everybody. It's, this is for everybody. It doesn't matter your sin. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you, what you did last night. It doesn't matter who you slept with. It, it doesn't matter. It, it, God is for everybody. And when you encounter him, he'll transform and change your life. 
and, and, and I could try to describe to you, but my words will always fail short because what God has planned for you, what he has destined over your life, it is bigger, it is better than anything I can think or imagine, but also anything that you can think or imagine. And I just want to leave room for God, Holy Spirit, to say, work in my life. If you have it, then I want it because I know it's for my good. As we leave here today, all of us have a next step. All of us do when it comes to the person of Holy Spirit. We find it in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. And I love the way the Message Bible puts it. Up on the screen. Ephesians 4.30. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. It continues to read, his Holy Spirit... Moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Folks, that's our next step. Don't take the gift of Holy Spirit for granted. Don't take him for granted. Don't take him for granted. Don't take him for granted. American church, don't take Holy Spirit for granted. Victory church, don't take Holy Spirit for granted. Well, pastor, how do I do that? How do I not take him for granted? A few closing thoughts. A few closing thoughts, and here they are. Let go of fears and misperceptions let go of fears and misperceptions because all of us have them all of us have them as it relates to god and especially the holy spirit let go of fears and misperceptions how do i do that proverbs 3 5 says trust god from the bottom of your heart don't try to figure out everything on your own The Bible doesn't say trust Google from the bottom of your heart. It says trust God from the bottom of your heart. And don't try to figure out everything on your own. Trust God. Let go of fears and misperceptions, especially as it relates to Holy Spirit. The next thought is this, go all in. Go all in. Go all in. Listen, there, listen, there is no such thing as a half and half believer, as a 50-50 Christian. There is no such animal. There is no such thing. Listen to me, friend. Following Jesus part-time doesn't work. Go all in. I'm trying to help you because the most miserable person on the planet is the person straddling a fence with one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And they're trying to do both. It is miserable. Stop it. Go all in. Go all in. Well, my friends look like they're having a great time over here in the world. They are. But most, most of the time, why? Because they're all in. They're all in. But I've got to tell you, in the kingdom, when you're all in over here, you have a great time too. But guess what? With no hangover, with no STDs, with no guilt, with no shame, there's joy in the morning. There's joy in the hard times. There's joy when everything is falling apart. You look crazy to some people. It's not fake. There's joy. Why? Because you're all in. I'm telling you, God, God, I wish, I wish you, you saw families up here on their best day. It's Mother's Day. Mamas and dads just holding babies. You have no idea the dark nights I know that some of these parents had gone through. The tears that were shed, and there they are holding a miracle. If they were in the world, the world would have said, hey, Jack will help you with that. 
Jack Daniels, he'll help you with that. But over here, in the kingdom, I'm telling you, go all in. Go all in. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, and you will seek me and find me. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. We'll seek God and find him. And here's the qualifier. Here's the conditioner. When you search for me with all of your heart. In fact, this, 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 a, a very, this is a very good prayer to pray over yourself. You read it? A very simple prayer that you can pray over, over yourself. It'll change your life. I'm telling you. You pray this prayer and you own it and you mean it. And you take this prayer home and you pray it today. You pray it tonight. You wake up tomorrow morning and you pray it. And you pray this prayer. It'll change your life. This prayer. It's this. God, if you have it, I want it. If you have it, I want it. God, if you have it, I want it. Especially if you're here and, you know, you, 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 you're, you've been coming for a while and you're thinking, well, I don't know about, you know, this Holy Spirit stuff. Man, I love when Pastor talks about Jesus. I love when he talks about God the Father and how he loves us. But I don't know about Holy Spirit. Listen, don't take my word for it. Don't even trust me. But trust God and pray this prayer. God, if you have it. I want it. If you have it, I want it. Well, pastor, isn't that a dangerous prayer to pray? Yes, it is. It's dangerous to hell. It's dangerous to the devil. It's dangerous to demons. It's dangerous to that generational curse in your family line. When a man or a woman or a young person says, God, if you have it, then I want it. I'm telling you, it's dangerous to every curse word spoken over your life. When God steps into your life, when he answers that prayer, he'll begin moving in your life and in your family and in your home. God, if you have it, I want it. In fact, Lord, if you have it, I want it. If you have it, I want it. This isn't my platform. This isn't my pulpit. This isn't my church. These are my people. This is your platform, your church, your pulpit, your people. And whatever you want, we want it. And then finally, lastly, we, we're ending. Lastly, develop an intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. Develop an intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. How do I do that, Pastor? How do you develop an intimate friendship with a person? How do you do it? You spend time with them. You talk to them. And you just don't do all the talking. You pause and you hear. You listen. You open up God's Word. And you hear what He has to say to you through His Word. Well, God, well, well, does he speak to you? Yeah, he speaks to you. But if you want to know what his voice sounds like, you first have to know what his word sounds like. A lot of people want to hear God's voice, but they don't care much about his word. I'm telling you, the more you get into this, the more you'll be able to distinguish his voice from all the others. When you think God is speaking to you and you think to yourself, was that the devil? Was that me? Was that God? You know what clears that up? Right here. I, listen, I, I believe God still speaks to people. I believe. He speaks to me. He speaks to me in my heart. It's an inner, it's an inner thing. I, I'm not talking, at least for me, it's not this audible thing, you know, where it's like, oh my, you know, it's not, it's, but I hear, and I believe in that. But I don't trust people that say, oh, I get that all the time, and they're never in this. Because I can only distinguish his voice. Here's what. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And the more I'm in this, the more I know what he sounds like. See, because we want direction from God without instruction from God. God, I, who am I supposed to marry? We want direction. What am I supposed to do in life? Develop an intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to close in just a second. We're going to dismiss you in just a short moment. Honey, can you join me, please? In just a moment, listen to me. You're not, don't, don't leave just yet. Just give me one, just give me 60 more seconds, and I promise I'll let you go. In just a moment, we're going to dismiss you. But before we do that, we're going to bless you. And at the end of the blessing... If you're here and you need prayer for any reason, any reason at all, we want to pray for you. 
If you're here and you weren't here last week when we prayed for the sick and you want to receive prayer because you're sick, we'll pray for you today. You don't have to be a member of Victory to receive prayer. In fact, all you need to do if you need prayer is in just a moment after we bless you, our prayer team is going to be up here. In fact, our prayer team can come right now. Those of you that are part of our prayer team, you can come. At the end of this blessing, if you're here and need prayer, all you need to do is slip out of your seat, come down and receive prayer. But listen to me. If you're here and you just want more of God, you just believe that you're taking that prayer seriously. God, if, if you have it, I want it. I encourage you to, to take that prayer home with you today and just to get hungry, to become thirsty for more of God, hungry for more of God. We are, listen, we are, I, 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 we're not in over our heads yet in revival, but we are at least, I've been telling you, ankle deep. I mean, I mean, God is moving. And I think it's even above the ankles a little bit. I think we're up into the shins. We're, we're in something here. I mean, people are coming to know Jesus. People are being healed, not just physically, but emotionally. They're getting healed mentally. God is doing miracles in people's lives. We just baptized 71 people, took their next steps in water baptism just a few weeks ago. That doesn't happen by accident. No, Holy Spirit is moving and working and active in our church and in our lives and in your lives. But what we're saying is, God, we want more. If you have it, I want it. Whatever it looks like, whatever it is, we trust you. So if you're here and you need prayer for any reason at all, in just a moment, after this blessing, you just come up and receive prayer. I want to bless you with what I've been praying over you every day. Beginning January 1st of this year, this has been my prayer over you. And I just want to release this, this to you. I started doing it last week, and I want to continue doing it today. Victory Church, I bless you today, friends and family. I bless you that God would grant you according to the riches of His glory that you would be strengthened with might through His Spirit in your inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we've asked or think according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Come on. If you need prayer, just come. We want to pray for you this morning. Just come quickly. We want to pray for you. Just come.